Hey, it's Chris. The iPhone 12 lineup shoots Dolby Vision HDR, which is absolutely bananas. No other camera does that. Not just other phone, but no other camera. So in this video, I wanna talk about it, explain it, break it down. So what is Dolby Vision, you ask? Well, that's a good question. Dolby Vision is Dolby's version or brand of HDR or high dynamic range content. So as a reminder, HDR lets you see more detail in the brightest brights and the darkest blacks, which basically just amounts to better picture quality, just being able to see those extra details versus SDR or standard dynamic range. All right, and then you're also gonna be able to see a much wider range of colors. All right, and so for the iPhone and for people who wanna shoot Dolby Vision HDR content using it and then share it with people, there's still some kinks to get worked out because this is all so new. All right, so I actually took this thing out and shot some Dolby Vision HDR clips the other day, maybe like 20 or 30 clips, just because I wanted to get some samples to actually show you guys. All right, and actually going out and shooting the clips, that was the easy part. There was nothing special I had to do to enable it because by default, the new iPhone 12 came with that HDR setting enabled. So if you go to your camera settings and record video, then you can see HDR video whether that's checked or not. So for me, I literally unboxed this and it was all set up, ready to go with Dolby HDR enabled, just right out of the box, which is, again, amazing for a phone. Now, for the highest quality footage, I went into the stock camera app and tapped on these numbers up in the corner until I got them to say 4K 60. So 4K resolution, four times the resolution of regular old 1080p HD at 60 frames per second which is like two times slower about than you would normally shoot. So you can slow things down 50% for extra slow cinematic footage. Now for most of the footage, I just ended up shooting handheld, just like this, try to keep it as steady as possible. And that worked out really well. Although I did bring the Osmo Mobile 4 that just came out from DJI with me just in case. And I got a few shots with that that were extra buttery smooth as well. You can actually see in the corner here that these are labeled HDR. And while I was shooting these clips and then looking at them on the phone itself, I was just amazed by the quality. Okay, it's actually really easy to see the HDR in action and to see the difference that it makes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. As you scroll through your photos or your videos, it just lights up. It's like extra lighting kind of kicks in. And that's the difference that that HDR is making. And it's a pretty big difference, honestly. You can really tell. So in places where the sky would have been blown out and I might not have seen some clouds, I could see some clouds. Or if I was shooting something like a building or a tree or a face or something, where the sun was directly behind and you know making that subject darker with more shadow, I could see some detail in that shadow. And the colors absolutely did pop. And really, as I'm sitting here reviewing them even right now, it's the kind of thing where you really have to see it with your own two eyes to believe it. Now, that being said, I've uploaded a sample video of all these clips on the Daily Tech Clips channel. So if you wanna go check it out, I'll have that linked up down below. But you're gonna wanna see the rest of this video first to make sure that number one, you can view the HDR content and also just to make sure that you fully understand how it all works because I don't know, it's just kind of a long story. So let's get into it. All right, so I shot some Dolby Vision HDR clips on my iPhone 12 Pro. From the Pro, I airdropped those clips over to the iPad Air, the 2020, the new one, the same one that I unboxed in a recent video. Also the same one that I wish I had stuck a paper like on so that it matched my iPad Pro. Once those clips were on the iPad, I dropped them all into iMovie and I edited them together, which for the most part meant that I would come in and mess with their speed and often slow it down to half speed so it'd be nice and slow since we shot in 4K 60. Then I rearranged the clips, I changed their transitions. So I will just say the iPad Air sliced through this HDR Dolby Vision footage, the 4K 60, footage, 10 bit footage, just like it was nothing. So just kind of on a side note, if you're looking at getting the iPad Air and you're wondering, is it powerful enough to do something like edit crazy Dolby Vision 4K 60 content? The answer is absolutely. It performs like a champ. Now the reason that I used iMovie on an iPad, and I could have done this on the iPhone, but the reason I used that instead of Final Cut Pro or any other editor is because iMovie is the best place to edit this Dolby Vision footage shot on your iPhone right now. 
In fact, Final Cut Pro can't even handle it yet right now. You're gonna get an error if you throw it in. It's gonna get converted to a different type of file that you can edit. Now, there is gonna be a Final Cut update later, I think later this year, probably when Big Sur arrives for Mac OS. But right now, if you're shooting Dolby Vision content on your iPhone and need to edit it, iMovie is definitely the way to go. And just kind of a funny note, Apple recently updated the Clips app, you know, the one with the funny filters and stuff. They're not really funny, they're pretty cool actually. So if you use Clips now, either on your iPhone or on your iPad, that can edit and shoot Dolby Vision HDR as well. Now here's where things got really interesting for me. When I finished the video, and it was real short, easy to edit, I selected my project and I went to share. Instead of seeing this little bit of text here that says options and being able to scroll down and make sure that HDR was checked, I didn't get that. And if that's not checked, then you're not exporting in HDR. And if you're not exporting in HDR, you can't upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or any other platform as an HDR video. Now, I couldn't figure out what was going on. I had shot it in HDR, I knew that for a fact. The files were showing me that they were tagged HDR on my iPhone. They airdrop over to the iPad. You know, nothing changed with that. It was still the HDR clips. I was pretty sure I had edited those HDR clips in iMovie on the iPad Air. So something seemed to be breaking down when I was doing the export, because I tried it. I tried exporting that way without the options uploaded it to YouTube and I didn't get an HDR video out of it. So what did I do? I called up Apple support and I talked to a really awesome guy named Nick, shout out to Nick, who did like superhuman feats of strength trying to figure this out for me. But it was also new that even the Apple support people had never encountered somebody needing to know how to export Dolby Vision HDR stuff out of iMovie and why I wasn't seeing those options there. So as it turns out, what I did was I asked Jonathan Morrison, who I knew had already figured it out on Twitter. And you know what? And you know what? He's so awesome that he sat down for a quick FaceTime and he was like, oh, I see the problem. Basically, you just need to uninstall iMovie, reinstall it, which will force it to update to the latest version, which when I did that, gave me that options option, which let me check the HDR and then export in HDR. So long story short, if you're gonna be sharing this in HDR out of iMovie from your iPad or from your iPhone, just make sure that you've got that latest version of iMovie installed. And then you'll see this HDR toggle and you'll know that you're good to go. And by the way, if you haven't yet seen Jonathan's HDR Dolby Vision samples, then go check him out. They're over on his new channel, Jonathan and Friends, and I'll link that up down below too, because they're really amazing. But that's not the end of the story, because if you wanna share this, where are you gonna share it? Probably via YouTube. And if you're gonna share it on YouTube, well, YouTube doesn't support Dolby Vision. What YouTube supports when it comes to HDR is HDR10, which is kind of a competing format. So if you go and you upload the project that you exported from iMovie that is Dolby Vision and you upload that to YouTube, what's gonna happen is YouTube is gonna convert that into HDR10 to the best of my knowledge. And again, it's not like you can just go Google this and figure out how all this stuff works because it's so new that the support documents just aren't out there. And even Apple support itself hasn't yet been apprised of how all this works. And here's the other thing, that clip that I uploaded to the Daily Tech Clips channel that's a sample of Dolby Vision that you can check out, well, it hasn't even finished processing in HDR yet. I uploaded it on gig internet sometime last night, let it process overnight, and it still hasn't processed past 720p, and it hasn't processed into HDR yet. Nevertheless, depending on when you're watching this, whether it's right after I upload it or if it's been a, you know, a couple weeks or something, you can go check out that sample and just kind of get an idea for how it looks, hopefully at least in HD <laughs> if it's processed yet, and hopefully with that HDR. But the caveat is that it's gonna be HDR10, I think, and not Dolby Vision technically. And again, you can go check out Jonathan Morrison's music video that he shot, which has a link in the description to just the actual Dolby Vision footage. But there's another wrinkle here. You can't just go and view HDR content on any device you have to have a device that's actually capable of displaying HDR content. And again, we kind of have this format war happening. So if your monitor, for instance, supports HDR10 or your TV supports HDR10, then you're not gonna be able to see Dolby Vision content. Or you may have a TV like I do. I just got the new uh, LG OLED that's a 2020 and it supports both HDR10 and Dolby Vision. So it doesn't make you choose. So 
uh, your phone may support HDR, and if it does, there's a good chance that it's actually HDR10, but uh, you'll just need to check. And so if you go and check out some HDR content or some samples from people shooting iPhone video with Dolby Vision, then you have to understand, you need the right kind of display or screen to actually view it. All right, but we're still not done talking about all the quirks because look, a lot of people are able to access some of these uh, Dolby Vision samples that are starting to get posted on their iPhone 11s in 720p, HDR, I think, but in HDR, but not on the new iPhone 12s. Isn't that weird? And I actually tried it for myself and I wasn't able to access the HDR content on my iPhone 12 either, even though I could watch in HDR on my iPhone 11. This is the iPhone 11, this is Jonathan's sample, and if I go up to the quality settings, you can see that it says quality auto 1080p HDR. All right, and that's basically the best way to tell if you can watch a YouTube video in HDR is to go to the quality settings, look at the resolution, and see if it says HDR next to the quality. So here you can see the same HDR video being shown on the iPhone 11 Pro on my right here, and the iPhone 12 Pro on my left, and the iPhone 12 Pro does not have an HDR option here in YouTube. Whereas, even though it's a lower quality, the iPhone 11 Pro does. It's just quirky, like there's some things that need to get worked out still. So that's what I'm saying, it's early days, nobody really knows what's going on, and it's kind of just a time of experimentation. So that's why I wanted to publish this video because if you're really excited about this format, being able to shoot this high quality video, edit it, and share it, which again, no other camera out there shoots Dolby Vision HDR, only the iPhone then hopefully this video is somewhat useful or helpful in terms of just sharing my experience and kind of giving you a little bit of a rough tutorial on everything that I've learned and what you can do if you wanna take advantage of this amazing footage and share it as well. All right, well that's it for this video. Thanks for hanging out guys, I appreciate it. Hopefully this was useful. Don't forget you can check out the Daily Tech After Party. That's the podcast, it's out every Friday. Also you can connect on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Daily Tech, spell daily T-E-K-K -K in both of those places. And the Clips channel has officially been revived. If you wanna check that out, subscribe for all the good clips, cause you don't have the attention span to sit through these longer videos, then you can do that. All right, catch you in the next one, later.